Hello and welcome! This is Edrel doing a brand new mod spotlight on Advanced Repulsion Systems. Advanced Repulsion Systems is a mod by Imnibis, which is also the author of Tube Stuff, Liquid XP, Infinite Tubes, and some other mods. Uh, this mod allows you to create force fields. Now, if you've played around with uh, modular force field systems before, the mod, you'll be able to uh, see some similarities. However, this mod has some uh, different functionality than that mod and um, don't worry because I'm going to show you how it all works. To begin with, you're going to need to craft yourself a force field core, which you craft like this. Um, MFE, electrolyzer, some circuits, and electrolyzed water cells, two advanced alloys, and this new item which is called the energy modulator, and you just need to craft it like that. Now when you place it in the world you can access its interface where you're gonna see how much force power it's got stored, uh, the range it's gonna be able to um, power um, projectors of force fields from, and how many projectors it's linked. And a projector is simply a block that is able to project a force field. Then there's a slot for a frequency card which you're gonna use to link this block with uh, the projectors. Now the force field core is able to accept two upgrades, the force field core storage upgrade and the range upgrade and the storage upgrade simply increases the capacity it's able to um, its capacity so it'll, it'll be able to store more energy inside and the energy is given by means of IC energy in this case I'm gonna use a thermal generator from Greg Tech to, pro to provide some energy and it's gonna convert that IC energy into uh, force power and it's gonna start storing it and once it gets to a certain level uh, you'll see the bar starting to appear. Now the other upgrade, upgrade basically doubles the range for each upgrade you put is gonna double the range at which you can uh, connect uh, uh, force field projectors. So if I put a 1 the range goes up to 32 from 16 if I put 2 the 32 is gonna double up to 64 and then I'll be able to put uh, projectors up to 64 blocks away alright so I've got this um, force field core set up with a lot of upgrades and I've got it linked to all of these projectors which I'm gonna show you right now uh, but first I'm gonna show you how to link the first projector now you wanna craft yourself a blank ARS card with uh, you can create eight of them with four paper, four redstone and one circuit and you wanna right click your core and then you get this uh, force field frequency card which you can right click on a projector with so that uh, the projector will be linked with the core over there so let's link it to our first projector, the area force field projector, which you craft like this. 8 reinforced stone, and this new item, the projector base, which you craft uh, with this uh, recipe. So it's not too bad. Um, so you just right click the block, and if you right click, you'll see that this is connected to the core over here, and they both have the same energy. Uh, the additional settings are to control the force field itself you can say uh, the radius of the force field and the shape either cube or sphere in this uh, area force field projector and when you apply a redstone signal it's gonna generate a force field of that size now the bigger the uh, size the more energy is gonna consume so you know keep that in mind and the cube would look like let's see if that disappears there you go the cube would look like this it's gonna take a little bit because it's generating um, actually there is a, a, a cooldown uh, before you can use a force field again so you, you gotta wait a little bit and there you have it a cube shaped force field so let's move on to the next which is the line force field projector you craft with two reinforced stone and one of those projector base um, and you simply place it like this now how you configure it is you tell it how long it is and the distance from uh, the front that the force field is gonna be so if I say a distance of 5 and a length of 10 it's gonna create a force field 5 blocks away that is gonna be 10 blocks long 
Now if you wanna stang extend this force field you're gonna need to uh, craft a projector extender with three reinforced, reinforced stone and one of these diamond lens lenses and you just put it um, next to this one and then you can configure it and tell it what width you want and the width is gonna determine how uh, much the original force field is gonna extend so if I right click it extended it twice because uh, this is applying its own force field plus one more so it's gonna generate this one by default and then one more uh, if I put it to um, uh, if I turn it off, I can uh, change it to zero and then it'll just generate its own. And then I can just extend it to uh, reach whatever width I want. There you have it, and that's a way of creating a force field, a flat force field on the ground. Let's move on to the plate force field projector, which requires three reinforced stones and one projector base and it's very simple, it basically gener generates a wall. You can specify the X width, which is actually actually the height, uh, must be a typo, the Z width, which is the uh, width to the sides, and the distance from the projector. So let's see it, and there you have it, we have a wall. Um, now the X is actually the number of blocks above the initial one here, and the Z is the number of blocks to the left and to the right of the initial block here. So if I were to say um, 1, it's gonna generate this wall because it's one block to the left, one block to the right, and one block to the top. Next up, um, the tube force field projector. You can orientate it front or uh, center if it's center it's gonna generate the force field around this block if it's front it's gonna start generating the force field up uh, here and then it's gonna go, go over there uh, so let's do it front, let's say radius of 3 and take length of 20 and this is what it looks like generate a tube and let's try the center orientation and it generates the force field centered on this block now we've got an item here which is called the MF device offset and you craft it like this, 5 refined iron, a diamond, a piece of redstone, two, cable, two cables and basically it allows you to control where the force field is going to appear re, um, in relation to the block so if we try it on the uh, flat one here if I shift right click it's gonna start increasing that number on the chat. So you can see minus six, minus seven, minus eight, and that's the X coordinate. So it's gonna generate this field, and then it's gonna move it eight times uh, in the negative X coordinate. There you have it. If I shift click on the top, it's gonna start going up, and if I generate the force field again, it generates it up. If I don't shif shift click, then it's gonna invert the, uh, uh, the number increase and you can uh, play around with these values until you get your force field to wherever you want it to be. Now these uh, projectors are able, some of them, to accept upgrades. For example, we've got the underwater upgrade, force field underwater upgrades, that you craft with four alloys and one bucket. You can place it uh, just uh, the same as the core upgrades except uh, next to the projector, and they will light up to uh, show you that it's working. Now the underwater upgrade basically makes it so that any liquid inside the um, area of the force field once, the for once we generate the force field it's gonna remove that liquid. So if we have some water um, you know, uh, griefing our place once we activate the um, force field it's gonna take it off. And same with lava. Next upgrade is the force field dome upgrade that is crafted with four alloys and one circuit. Basically it um, makes it so that the force field only generates on the uh, upper half. So instead of the force field trying to uh, cover an area all around the block, um, which I'm gonna show you, it's just gonna generate up to, up to the height of the block. So if we didn't have this upgrade, 
the force field tries to go down and around. But the dome makes it so that it only generates uh, down to here. Next upgrade is the force field block cutter upgrade. Basically, um, if the force, if where the force field blocks appear, there is another block. It's gonna destroy that block and it's gonna drop it. Let's see it in action. And there you have it. All the blocks that were in the way of the force field have been destroyed. Now, next update would be the force field zapper upgrade, which you craft with a Tesla coil and four advanced alloys. Simply place it next to your projector and it's gonna light up just like all the other blocks and once you turn your force field on you're gonna see that it's turned the color of red and it has some uh, particles flying around. Uh, if you approach this force field in survival mode you're gonna get damage. Uh, any living entity or mob that approaches the force field will receive damage. And that's the zapper upgrade. Next up, we've got the camouflage upgrade that you craft with a frequency transmitter, four diamonds and four alloys, so it's a little bit more expensive than the other upgrades. Simply place it next to your projector and give it a block. Let's try sandstone. And it's gonna tell me OK if uh, the block is accepted. Once I turn the, uh, the force field on, it's gonna appear as if they were sandstone blocks, but they're not sandstone blocks because if I try to destroy them they reappear. These are uh, perfectly legit um, force field blocks, so you cannot break them. And you can also use many other blocks like for example glass. Um, you basically could have your whole base made out of camouflage uh, blocks that look like something nice. And that's the camouflage upgrade. Next up, we've got the inhibitor upgrade that you craft with a machine block and four advanced alloys. Uh, the inhibitor upgrade, basically what it does is if there is another projector that is being fed with another core, uh, it won't be able to generate a force field if it's going to interfere with the uh, force field that has the inhibitor inside. So I'm gonna get myself a um, dome projection here so I can get out and I'm gonna show you that this projector that has been linked to the other core won't be able to generate its uh, fill just because I'm using an inhibitor upgrade. There you have it and that's what the inhibitor upgrade does. So let's move on to a whole new block, the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is made to attack. It's gonna emit this grey lighting as soon as living entity approaches it uh, and now it's trying to kill me. But good thing I'm in creative mode. If I were in survival mode it would start damaging me. But it's not really... Um, you can see my energy going down. It's doing a decent amount of damage. How do you program this block so it doesn't attack you but it attacks all those people you hate? Well, it's easy, you just need to get yourself a programmable filter, which you craft like this to get uh, four of them, and you place it uh, right in front of the Tesla coil so it emits this um, red laser, and you want it to connect to the block. Uh, now when you click on it, you're gonna get this interface with a lot of slots. Well, in these slots you can put a new item called tokens, there are many tokens, uh, some tokens can detect items, uh, some can detect mobs, uh, animals, etc. And basically you want to combine the tokens so you get the effect you want. In my case I want it not to kill players, so in my case I would put the player detector token and I would say um, I could apply one of these conditions and, or, or, no, or not and then uh, I could reverse the effect. So in this mode the Tesla coil is gonna detect players and then it's gonna apply a not condition so basically it's not gonna detect players but it's gonna detect anything else. So if I were to spawn some creepers or cows or villagers or even items, you can see it also destroys items. And every time it destroys something it's gonna consume energy. So I don't want it to consume items, so what do I do? I could have a player detector 
plus an item detector and I say either one of these I do not want to destroy so now if I drop some items it's gonna ignore them um, so you can put this, uh, these blocks in line you can like uh, stack them up like this and in this mode here the, the colors on the right if you turn it on by clicking then uh, and then you put like a condition here then whatever you put in here it's gonna move it to the slot to the right and it's gonna apply that condition so if I were to have uh, all of this here player detector, item detector or and then I were to put a not condition on this block here then it's not gonna attack me anymore because it's applying a not condition to the player detector or item detector if I take the um, not token off it will attack me again or if I turn off the this item because uh, as I said this will pass the token to the filter uh, you know that are, uh, the filters that are connecting to it um, we have a special token here that's called the redstone input token and it will basically allow us to control uh, the programmable filter with redstone so if we put it here we did the not we take it off the not token it won't attack us because uh, what this token does is if there is no redstone signal applied to it then it won't detect anything however if we get a lever and we uh, we apply it to it then it's gonna try to detect everything and that's what the redstone input token does uh, so what do we have here um, Tesla range upgrade basically allows the Tesla to act in a much bigger range and let's make it so it doesn't attack me uh, now if I were to spawn some mobs kind of far away it's gonna reach them and you can put more than one um, one of these upgrades on the mod it actually can get to ridiculous amounts uh, next up we've got the Tesla speed upgrade basically makes the shots the lightning uh, faster it, re it increases the speed by 9% of whatever it was before uh, I've been testing with this block and I n honestly haven't noticed any difference uh, I mean to me it seems like the lightings always occur at the same intervals but supposedly that's, that's what they do next up wavelength shift upgrade this is a straightaway upgrade basically makes it so the lighting does not appear so basically all mobs around the Tesla coil are gonna die and you're not, not, you're not gonna know why they're just gonna receive the lighting but there's no lightning next up remote potion applicator applicator remote potion applicator you connect it just like the other blocks and it has an interface where you can put potions um, just to try it out let's get some potions of swiftness and let's get some mobs and every time the tesla coil acts on a mob it's gonna apply a potion on it as you can see you, you saw the particles uh, this could be used to apply uh, beneficial potions on a player or simply to uh, I guess to apply uh, harmful potions to uh, mobs so you can apply any type of potion next up we've got the loot collector loot collector uh, makes it so that instead of destroying items let's turn the uh, let's take the item detector off instead of destroying items when the Tesla uh, hits them it's actually gonna store them and it's gonna store them in this block and it's only gonna store one type of item so let's get some gunpowder dusts and put them here and now let's spawn some creepers and let's hope that they drop some gunpowder there you have it and now we're gonna see how the Tesla coil is gonna destroy the gunpowder there you have it but instead of destroying it it's putting it into the loot collector and that's what it does next up 
EMP upgrade. The EMP upgrade is connected just like the other blocks and it's able to store energy independently of uh, any other machine so you can um, you know apply a power source to it it's gonna start consuming and when it hits a player that is wearing quantum armor is gonna take off as much energy from that quantum armor as you have stored here so uh, you really can't see you really cannot see, I don't think, how much energy you have stored here. Oh, apparently you can't kind of. It tells demanded energy uh, nine nine hundred eighty six thousand. So I'm guessing it's uh, counting off from a, a million. So I guess it's got stored fifteen thousand. And if I were to say that you can attack players, uh, then it's gonna take that amount from my armor, and it's just drain almost 20,000 energy from it and at the same time it drained the energy left in the uh, in this block so that's what the EMP does uh, would be useful to kill players with um, quantum armor finally uh, you might have noticed that you've got a lot of upgrades but not a lot of sites uh, to solve that you've got the upgrade multiplexer and I've already set up something here the upgrade multiplexer is able to accept upgrades from its size and then transmit them to the uh, Tesla coil. So I'm applying all of these upgrades of uh, distance range upgrade and you can see the huge range that the Tesla coil has. It's attacking me even though I'm uh, incredibly far away. So that's the multiplexer. You can apply multiple upgrades to a Tesla coil by first applying them the multiplexer you can queue them together like this very useful block next up we've got the uh, three last items uh, actually two last items force field filter and item de detection filter now the force field filter is placed next to an area projector like this one and it basically controls whether the um, Tesla coil it's connected to let's connect one and uh, give it some energy it's gonna control whether the Tesla coil it's on uh, since the force field is off the Tesla coil is not working but as soon as I turn the force field on it's gonna start trying to kill me and you could put filters in between this, uh, you know, this laser signal here, to, you know, to uh, inverse that behavior, and then it would be only on when uh, the force field was off. And finally, we have the item detection filter, one ender pearl and one programmable filter, will net you one of those items, and you can just place it in the wall like that, and make sure it's connecting with a laser to the Tesla coil. Now, by default, any item you put in here will serve as um, a reverse key, meaning that if you have the item in the inventory, it's going to try to kill you. Now, you probably want to re reverse it be this behavior so you can use this item as, uh, you know, kind of a key so that the uh, Tesla coil recognizes you and doesn't try to destroy you. And you do that by using a programmable filter in the middle and applying a not condition. I'm making sure this is on. So it's reversing the behavior of the um, item detection filter. Now, since I have the item in the inventory and I've reversed that behavior, then the Tesla coil won't try to kill me. However, if I were to take the item away, then there you have it. So that was a spotlight of the Advanced Repulsion Systems mod by Imnibis. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.